The Red Sea, a diver's haven that's literally just a hop, dip, and a jump away from Europe. And good to be in Europe because it's a great place to dive. Pretty warm all year around, great variety, and it's great for beginners and advanced scuba divers alike. With lots of variety of scuba diving, from cavern diving, shipwreck, reef, and deep water diving. With some rare to see animals such as hammerheads, oceanic white tip, and more. What is not to like about the Red Sea? And best of all, it's fairly affordable as well. And you have your options of diving from the shore and diving from Liverpool. Let's dive right in. Most people dive in Red Sea in the north and south area just off the coast of Egypt. There is the potential of diving in Sudan as well but let's just say it's a little off limits due to the political concerns of Sudan but if you can make it there I've heard great things. Because there's less divers and less commercial fishing in the area the diving there is fairly pristine and, and I hope to experience it someday. Sudan actually has some great diving. But let's kick things off with North Red Sea. So this is generally the more beginner friendly area, the place they go for shipwrecks. And it has a lot of shore diving. Now, though I'm not entirely sure if there is liveaboard diving in the north. Usually when you board the liveaboard, you'll dive in the central area and go downward. So the north is a place I haven't been diving yet, but I do hope to experience it one day and do a circuit with the shipwrecks there. Like I said, it's generally more accessible and beginner friendly, but they have also shipwrecks in the south but the ones that are there you have to be basically check diving down to them because they're very deep. The south and central areas or generally just called the south red sea of the Egypt coast area is where a lot of people go for liveaboards although you can do shore diving as well but it's generally considered more advanced seeing that there is stronger currents and a lot of the dive sites are deeper. It's worth noting that the coral there is is pristine it is beautiful and still full of life and you will see sharks lots and lots of sharks from guitar sharks tons of reef sharks from black and white tip reef sharks and you'll see the oceanic white tip which is a more fearsome predator in the area but because I have seen numerous videos of the oceanic white tip fighting divers I was still saying on the asterisk as that's a fairly rare event but for some reason in this area it is more frequent than others, but it is also highly trafficked for scuba divers. So pay attention. I do have a video and I'll link it here above. Check it out if you're interested or concerned about that. And I hope it helps. If you're lucky, I mean really lucky, you'll get to see hammerhead sharks and thresher sharks too, but they are often in a deep and it's kind of a luck-based thing to be able to see them. On rare occasions that I've never seen myself there, but you can see tiger sharks as well. Also, they have dolphin sanctuaries with pods of hundreds if not thousands of dolphins that are, that are just beautiful to see and they might interact with you while diving but you'll definitely see them on the surface frequently and if you're really lucky really lucky you can go find the dugong which is like a manatee but they look a little bit different and they're like the gentle as i've heard them called the sea cow and they are just awesome to see not to mention there is tons and tons of cavern dives and some of them can take like 20 to 30 minutes to go through basically one way and they're beautiful often you'll get to see the sunlight from above coming in through the top and just creating all this lighting ripple effect through the coral and the rock that you'll be surrounded by in these caverns and it just creates this most atmospheric and magical effect I've ever experienced. I was definitely impressed with the cavern diving. I'm not generally a big fan of caves and caverns but these cannot really be missed. So definitely check those out and you won't be disappointed. Aside from the caverns, there's lots of walls to dive on and some coral rings in which you can round. And if you're really decent with your air consumption, you can round some of these big old islands in one dive, which is a pretty cool experience. So there's two main ways you can visit and see the Red Sea. And that is from the shore diving with day trips by small vessel to some of the dive sites that are out in the middle of the Red Sea, or you can do a liveaboard. So let's talk about both, because we did both. Starting with Marcel, that's where we stayed. It's a smaller fishing area, 
and we stayed not even at a dive resort. It was just this all-inclusive resort. It was super cheap and it wasn't anything to write home about in terms of the hoteling, but all the food was inclusive and they even had alcohol. It was some of the worst alcohol I've ever drank, but they had it and it was free. And with that said, one of the main things we were there for was diving. The dive shop was also fairly cheap, but I will have to asterisk that when you go outside of just the shore diving, you're looking at several hours a day being on boat there and back. You just have to get there like three hours and three hours back. I, I don't remember if it's exactly three hours, but it is long. You're just kind of killing a lot of time on the boat. So live aboard really is the optimal experience for seeing things outside the shore. But let's get into that shore diving because they have some pretty nice reefs around the area. One of the things I mentioned earlier, we really wanted to see a dugong. So let me tell you a story about the dugong. We went diving in Komodo many years before and there was this one diver who's been all over the world super experienced and he was telling this the story of the dugong and that he spent so many trips trying to find a dugong and just experience and see a dugong himself the unicorn of the ocean if you've seen a dugong leave a comment below because you've seen the unicorn which is quite funny when we went we were on a mission to see the dugong so we set aside three days and we were just doing most of our dives at a local area i forgot the dive site name but it's nothing to write home about but the main reason we we're there is because the dugongs were visiting that area fairly frequently because of the grass and they eat the seagrass so on the first day we were down diving we did our full dive no dugong so we came up and we're doing our surface time and someone yells out dugong and we jump in and we're then snorkeling because we're still waiting out our surface time before we can dive again we really wanted to dive down and see the dugong but we'll take what we can get so we're on the surface snorkeling and there's a scuba diver down there chilling with a big old camera and the dugong comes up to the scuba diver and he's like doing these like magical flips and he's doing these just spins right i don't know he's like dancing for this diver that's taking some great footage because it's right in front of him and it's practically dancing for him and we're sitting there watching it from the top from quite a distance our footage really isn't going to be good at this distance especially with a gopro but it was still cool to see we were seeing the dugong and then it came up to the surface it was right in front of us my wife was right next to it getting some pretty close footage and just having a magical moment with this amazing creature right in front of her when suddenly the dive master grabs her fin and yanks her away now it wasn't because she was too close it was because our surface time is done and now we can get the scuba tanks on so i can see why he made the decision let's go get the tanks on and we can get ready to dive but at the same time she was getting some great footage and having a moment and so you can imagine she was pissed after that and anyways with that said we did get back to the boat we got the tanks on we're ready to go we're gonna dive that dugong and we get back to the spot the dugong has has left the scene. <laughs> So we did a dive and the dugongs already left and she missed out on her magical moment. But in retrospect, we still were there. We were close to the dugong. It was doing its thing. We saw it dancing for the scuba diver. It was pretty cool. So we saw the magical unicorn ourselves and I'm pretty happy with that. So go find your dugong and let us know. But Marcel Alon is quite a nice area. There are a number of famous dive sites that a lot of people recognize and such as Elfinstone, Abu Dhabi, Fury, Shoals and Sha'ab Samadai. I'm sure I'm butchering the name, but a lot of people call it just Dolphin House. And we had to go to the Dolphin House. And I highly recommend if you go there, go to the Dolphin House at least once because you'll see thousands of dolphins there. And it's a great place to experience dolphins and get fairly close to them. And they will interact with the divers and snorkels fairly frequently. And these are spinner dolphins, which are the smaller size dolphins, but they're still good size and you'll see hundreds of them. And while we went to Marcel Lam, which is a popular place for shore diving. There are four other places worth mentioning that we did not get to experience, but I don't want to do you a disjustice by leaving them out. And those are Sharm El Sheikh, Pergata, Dahab, and El Kaiser. And I can't speak to those specifically because I haven't yet experienced them, but I do hear great things about them as well. All right, let's talk about the best time to go to the Red Sea. So one thing to note about the Red Sea is it's hardly ever a bad 
that time to go. It's warm all year round, although there is a slightly cooler season, but cooler being 22 Celsius, which is not that cold. But of course, colder than the warmer season, which is 25, 26 Celsius. So kicking things off in the winter time, when the year tends to be at its coldest, you'll see it's kind of a popular time to go to the Red Sea because it's still decently warm. And in the summertime there, it's just blazing hot. So it's actually a good temperature for people to escape the colder months in Europe and go there for warm diving. And during the winter months of December through February it tends to be the best visibility. March or May is considered the best time to go to the Red Sea but it's also going to be the highest traffic so expect to see the most people during that time frame as well. June through August tends to be the low season and a good time to get good discounts and also the best time to go if you want to see the hammerhead. Of course it's all probability and just because you go there during this time frame doesn't mean you're guaranteed to see hammerhead and you can still see hammerheads in the off season as well it's just the roll of the die and your probability of one. September through November is also a good time if you want to see mantas and thresh. Although I will strongly asterisk that Red Sea is probably not the best place to go to see these. There are easier places to see threshers and mantas. However, if Red Sea is close to you and you're just looking to hopefully get the best chance of seeing threshers and mantas, then it's your best time to go. All right, now let's talk about the optimal way to experience the Red and that is by liveaboard. But one important thing I have to mention is liveaboards tend to be more for advanced groups. By advanced, maybe not just super beginner, because once you get a little bit of dives around your belt, you'll be able to go on a liveaboard. And Red Sea, of all the places I've been, is really not too challenging of diving, but there are some challenging areas. You can expect some current at some of the dive sites, but really it's not as bad as I've seen elsewhere. So it's worth noting that it's advanced, but not too advanced. So get some dives under your belt and then try a Red Sea liveaboard. Because what is nice is when I was spending like three hours to Dolphin House or Elphinstone on that boat with the bumpy waves, I was thinking to myself, I hope the dive site's worth it. You have a lot of time to think about things like the meaning of life and why am I here? Think about all the choices you made. But with the liveaboard, you just wake up, have breakfast, jump right on into the dive site and get straight to business and enjoy. So it's a completely different experience and the lip boards are really not that expensive comparison to other places we've seen because it's fairly easy to supply the area and you're really not too far away from society in the Red Sea. I remember we were going all the way down to St. John, which is quite a ways down there. And the night before, you go to St. John's, make sure you buckle up and strap in because it's gonna be potentially doozy. I think the ships in the Red Sea are not necessarily the most nice boats. They are nice boats, but they're not necessarily ocean vessels in the way I think they just get torn apart if they're actually in real ocean. But with that said, I remember distinctly being on some ocean vessels in the Pacific with really rough waves and then also on the Red Sea on these big liveaboards and the amount of turbulence, the amount of up and down sway experience seemed to a different degree on Red Sea. For whatever reason, maybe we just experienced a particularly bad night. But pretty much everyone's luggage was being tossed left and right. If we heard bangs, everything was falling down and just the whole night people were yelling and you can hear things just flying across the room. And if you had anything, and luggage or anything, it wasn't super like secure. So we put all of our luggage below the beds. And of course, when it's rocking this much, it's just slamming from one side to the other all night. It wasn't a night full of rest. If you're in for experiences, gotta try it out, right? I just remember distinctly holding my hands against the side of the bed and just trying to keep myself from flying off of the bed. And it, it wasn't a bunk bed or anything, but I didn't want to fly off the bed. And you're just holding yourself pretty much the whole evening. That is the way. It's an experience. Anyways, after your sleepless night, you'll get to experience St. John's and Honestly, I don't remember St. John's that well today. We dove, I think, two days there, and it's on a blur because maybe lack of sleep, who knows. But 
it's still a good time and I don't remember it particularly being bad. But the best dive sites I remember distinctly is Elphinstone, Abu Dhabi, and we didn't get the chance to go to it because it's also pretty far out from our route. But I do want to go back. In fact, I plan to go back there in a few months to experience the Daedalus, which I also heard some great things about. And of course, Elphinstone and Daedalus are these popular spots where you'll likely have the best chance of seeing the hammerhead and the thresher sharks and just a lot of sharks in general and also oceanic white tip. Those are also the areas where you'll experience a little bit more current and there are a little bit deeper dives. I don't remember them being particularly deep but they are deeper and I believe it was Elphinstone if you're particularly a strong diver you can go ahead and circle the whole reef and I think that's what we did as well which is kind of a cool experience. Red Sea why is it called the Red Sea? Honestly I don't know. I heard and I was believing that it's because the coral there had a red tint to it and that's why it's the Red Sea. And honestly, that's not true at all. I don't think that there's particularly more red coral here or fire coral or anything that makes it red. But regardless, there is plenty of hard and soft coral and it's in pretty good shape. I won't say great shape, but it is in pretty good shape. There's a good amount of reef fish, not a great amount. And definitely if you go to somewhere like Indonesia, or the Philippines, you're used to seeing all sorts of tiny little things. You're checking all the fan corals or those tiny little seahorses. There's really not many small animals, but there is a good variety of reef fish. There's coral snakes. There's, of course, the sharks, and you'll see some of the pelagics as well, but the bigger fish are fairly rare, so you kind of have to get lucky. When we went, a friend was telling us that they had gone the prior year and seen a lot more things, and we were just kind of unlucky. So maybe there's some luck involved as all things so it just depends on if you're looking for pelagics it's kind of hit or miss at least from my experience we're going to go back there so i'll let our experience is different this next time but it is fairly enjoyable and i've heard that if you're really lucky maybe you'll see some whale sharks and some whales of course i think you really gotta get lucky for that kind of stuff and maybe it's not the best place i've seen places like the maldives we have much higher chance of seeing those kind of things or socorro but overall i really enjoyed my time in red sea and I'm looking forward to going back, especially for the price point. It's a place you can go with fairly good calm waters with a good variety of things and not too far away from Europe. Of course, living in the United States, I don't really have that benefit, but it is still a nice place. And with Egypt, Jordan, and a number of other countries around the area to visit on the same trip, it becomes even more special of an area to experience and travel, especially if you enjoy adventure travel. Have you been to Red Sea? What was your experience like? Let me know when you're going next. Maybe I'll be able to join you. And by the way, you'll be doing lots of diving at the Red Sea. And sometimes you will have trouble equalizing. If you've ever experienced some trouble equalizing, I have just the perfect video for you. Check it out next year. Take care.